Are you ready, ladies? It's Colleen from Steel Heels, Small Business USA, Networking Golf, Generating Winners. I am so happy and proud of what we've created over the last four years here with the Small Business USA world. But one of the things I'm most proud of is Steel Heels because it really speaks to me and my heart and where my passions are and where it all starts. You know, I shared my story on our introductory podcast about 2009 being this pivotal year for me and really assessing, did I have it all? Could I have it all? And then figuring out, heck yeah, I want it all. And so I went after it and I redirected my life. And these podcasts are a series of storytelling, amazing, amazing women that I have met along the way and some instructional and inspirational tools to kind of get you going. But here's the deal. We want these to be fast, quick, no more than a half an hour because we know you're busy. You're a powerful woman. And this is about uniting around business, family, and friendship. Because come on, let's face it. Is there anything more important than that? So what's your plan? That's what we're talking about today. So when you have a goal, we all know that you have to have a plan to get there. You're going to throw an amazing dinner party. Well, if you're anything like me, it's one of my favorite things to do. I get my best friends all around a table and I just want it to be perfect. But I don't want it to be perfect for reasons that you might think or others might think. The dish doesn't have to be perfect. The silverware doesn't have to be perfect. For me, the time has to be perfect. I just want my dinner party to be uninterrupted so I can just spend great quality time without fussing and running. I want to be present for my guests. And that was a lot of my have it all philosophy is I needed to change my life because I wasn't present where it mattered. So what is your challenge? What are you trying to accomplish today? What, what is the holy grail for you? We're going to explore how to get to that. And if you don't know what your holy grail is and you haven't done that work to figure out what is it that you want and what does having it all mean to you, go back to tape one, visit our last podcast, and then come back here because we're going to take that plan and we're going to turn it into a reality starting today. And that's all about, guess what? Taking the first step. Yes, I want you to take that steel heel and plant it firmly in the ground and start moving. So if you're anything like me, creating a plan seems like the most challenging task in the world, especially when it's something so grand and has so many moving parts like life. I mean, I just, I just want to start going. I see that big beach house with the dock and the 60 foot yacht in the in the front yard, in the ocean side. I see their private beach and I just want to start working towards it. I don't want to think about how long or how are all the intricacies involved with that. But guess what? If you don't plan, it's going to be a lot harder to get there. It's going to take an incredible, incredible stroke of luck. All right. So we know if you don't plan for your dinner party, you're not going to have as much fun along the way. And that's what it's all about for us, right? Powerful women. It's about coming up with a plan, but enjoying life just as much along the way as you do when you get there. Having it all is not having it all in five years, having it all in 10 years, not even tomorrow. It's about having it all today and every day. So we know it doesn't really work and that's kind of shoot by the hip. We know you kind of got to sort of figure this out. You have to have a plan. And, and for you ladies that over plan, you know, every little nuance, the ones that go crazy when something goes wrong at their wedding, you got to chill because things are going to go wrong. I mean, I could tell you a thousand stories about just the last two years alone where, you know, somebody once said, the closer you are to the top, the steeper the climb. Oh, man, that is so the truth. I've totally felt it. So you have to be adaptable with your plan, too. You don't want to over plan because things change. So 
let's demystify this a little bit. I could give you the same thing most every coach in the world is going to tell you. Set a goal, break it down, take action. That's good. But that's just good. Most of us struggle with that first step. Why? Well, there's a lot of reasons, but mostly because who wants to waste the time to do it wrong? Who wants to be wrong? Who wants to make a mistake and have to start over? I mean, let's do it right the first time, right? So we overthink it before we get moving. I mean, we're women. We want to do it, do it right, be proud, and shout it out to the world. We want to set that example for our children, our neighbors or siblings, whomever, right? We don't want to let our dads down. Whatever the reason, there's a million of them why we don't take that first step. We don't, as women, give ourselves as much rope or as room for forgiveness as men do. I mean, seriously, you don't want to waste time doing it wrong. Let's do it the right the first time. Let's kick ass doing it. Let's not be, dare I say, wrong. It's like a bullet to the heart, but guess what? Great leaders make mistakes. Great entrepreneurs have failed on average six times before they found success. So let me help you here, ladies. Put on those steel heels and it's time to step forward bravely because something you do will at some point need to pivot. And so one of the first steps I want you to take down today is to take that first step. That's right. And then your next point is to take the second step because a body in motion stays in motion. Think about the gym. I am going to tell you I had an incredibly busy winter and I'm sad to say that I fell off my exercise routine. Put on a couple extra pounds I said, okay, come on, Ferrari, you're better than this. What are you doing? You're helping all these business owners stay fit, stay balanced, these families talk about wellness. And what are you doing? You're making excuses for not working out. Well, guess what? I was like, all right, I'm going to get healthy tomorrow. Okay, I'll have that one last ice cream tomorrow. It's so easy to do that. But what happens when you get to the gym for the first time? I know that you guys have felt that feeling. What happens when you step on the treadmill or you go out for a run or you go for a swim? What happens when you actually get out there just one time? You feel it, right? It may hurt, but boy, you step off that treadmill after being off of it for a while and you feel great. Now you have to harness and remember that great feeling and bring that to the next day. Because whoever you listen to, there's a study in, in Princeton that said m- many, pe- many people kind of live, this, there's these tribes that believe that it's 30 times to make something a habit. Well, they did the study in Princeton that showed that it's over 65 times before something becomes a habit. But guess what? You'll never get to that if you don't start. And so that first step and that second step are so important because what's going to happen that first step? It's so hard to get there. But once you get there, it feels great. You're proud of yourself. Now you're a little bit sore, but you're feeling good. Now that second step is just as important, right? That second step keeps it going and builds momentum. And a body in motion stays in motion. After you take that second step, you're going to be so proud of yourself. And you're going to remember how much easier it got. The second step is way easier than the first step, right? And then the third step is way easier than the second step. So it's really about starting that really makes a difference. Okay, my girlfriend, she is fierce, fierce, like steel heels fierce. I love her. She created steel heels with me. She and I were having a glass of wine talking about women who whine. (laughs) Get it? Wine, wine. All right, I'm not funny. Just asking anybody. My family, my husband and daughter will be quick to tell you I'm not funny. But so anyway, we were talking about women who were endlessly talking about doing something, but then never really taking action. You know that person, right? You're either talking about doing it or you're doing it, period. Well, my girlfriend, this brave, senior executive, fierce business leader, 
strutting those steel heels every day in one of the largest firms in the United States, decided it was, fi- it was finally time for her to find her soulmate. Her, her, she's daring, beautiful, ferocious. She's got it going on. But her kids are going off to college and she's got some motivation. She doesn't want to be alone. But, you know, nothing. Did she get back into the game? No. Crazy, right? If I had to ask the same woman to have her employees turn over every car upside down in their parking structure, she would have brought them in, inspired them, and had them flipping cars before the weekend. Enter in a challenge she's not sure she can win. Where the fear of failing and her insecurities get the best of her. And and let me just stop there. Listen, ladies, I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're the president of the United States. I don't care who you are. We all have insecurities. If you don't, you're a narcissist and you got bigger issues. With that said, this is that moment when our insecurities get the best of us. We need to supplant the why. Remember why from last podcast? As a single mom who didn't really want to be alone when her daughter goes to college, she has a reason right? This is a good reason to start dating times, times now, right? But it wasn't enough. Her why wasn't big enough to help her overcome their fear. But to help her daughter see that dreams can come true, that healthy relationships do exist, and to give her a positive role model because she doesn't want her daughter to fall in love with the only male role model she has, Yeah, you guessed it, her (laughs) ex-husband. Before that child lands in a dorm with a bottle of wine and a half dozen eager suitors, well, that's a pretty good why. So she put her why in action. Now what happens? She harnesses her why. And what happens in the first step? She takes her first step. She joins Match.com. Step one, it's awesome. She joins a country club. Step two, excellent. But then what happens? You guessed it. She starts some momentum going. She starts dating. She harnesses her why. She has a short-term plan. And you know what? After 30 days, she's met some not-so-special examples of the male race. One in particular man comes to mind who ranted all night about his record player. (laughs) But so she pivoted. She stopped looking at match.com. She stopped thinking about what was she asking? What was she talking about? What was her message? She started going places where she enjoyed going. And guess what happened now? She's really having a lot of fun. And she's met somebody who, who knows what the future holds, but she's crazy about him. She giggles and texts him 10 times a day. And here's this 50-year-old woman giggling, telling me about him on the phone. You know, it's about taking those first steps that are the key. My girlfriend couldn't see past her want when we talked. But once she harnessed her why... She moved forward with one step, then the second step, then a pivot and motion, then bodies in motion, stay in motion. That was probably not a really good thing to say (laughs) when I'm talking about dating, but we'll just, we'll liken that to dancing and move on. (laughs) You know, I'm going to let you um, in on a little secret here. And it's about steel, steel heels. You know, I was taunted. I think that's a good word by a friend of mine to create steel heels. And, um, you know, he bugged me and he was kept, come on, come on, Colleen. This is a great idea. You know, women need steel heels. I'm like, you know, what does he know? He's a man. But here's the truth. I will tell you in the very back of my head, I've always had this little voice that's been crying out saying, come on, girl, you want to be the next Tony Robbins. There's no women in that role. The door is wide open. You're helping businesses left and right. You're helping parents. People are listening to you. Go for it, Colleen. You can do it. You got this. 
And then I run to the bathroom because the thought of being so big just scared the heck out of me. Come on, Tony Robbins started selling t-shirts. If he can do it, so can I. I mean, training-wise, I got him, right? Then I realize it. I am so afraid of saying those words out loud and then failing. Maybe that I couldn't do it. But then my alter ego would scream, but you deserve it. Women need you. My brain would reason. You know, I have worked in corporate America. I have leaned in and been leaned on. So what did I do? I stepped. I got to practice what I preach, right? But that first step, that first podcast, that first plan, that everything, that first, the first step, that was the hardest. I wrote a script. Then I ripped it up. Then I wrote two scripts. Then I ripped it up. Then I recorded one and hid it from humanity. Then I recorded the introduction, which was not scripted. It's just me being me. Me telling you that, hey guys, I'm not all that in a bag of chips, but I'm happy and I feel like I have it all and I celebrate life every day and do what I want every day. And sure, are there things that get in the way and are there challenges and are there speed bumps? Heck yeah, but that's life, you know? But I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for that strength to to put my steel heel on, garner up some courage, and take that first step. So here we go, ladies. Let's do this together. I'll go after motivating and inspiring women. I'll go after bringing unbelievably inspiring women to you every week. I'll go after helping just at least one person change their destiny and change their life. And you, you have to promise that you're going to take that first step towards your dreams. And then the second. Get in motion, ladies. So write right now, write it down, secure it to memory. But I want you to think about what is your first step. Commit to it. When are you going to take that first step? Believe it. There's always fears associated with that first step. Mine were, oh, I'm not pretty enough. My voice isn't right. I'm too old. Then the reality hit me. If I never try, I will never be the female version of Tony Robbins. If I do try and I fail... Well, now I have the opportunity to come up with a better idea. So ladies, let's start. I need a commitment today from all of you. Can you just start? Can you put those steel heels firmly in place, take one step forward and keep your eye on the prize? Can you use your why? Can you use your why to overcome your fears? Can you get what you deserve in life? which is directly related to what you want in life? Yes, you can. But you need to start. You know what you want. Now go get it. You've got this. Ladies, it has been a pleasure. Next week, we're going to talk about stepping out in the workplace. If you're an entrepreneur, maybe this means stepping out amongst your competition. I'm not talking about leaning in. I want to talk about getting that ladder lined up so you can climb wherever you're going and separate yourself from the competition. It's time to put those steel heels into place. Take your plan and bring you to the forefront of action and success. We'll see you next week, everyone. Go get started. Write your plans. Here's to your success, ladies. You've got this. For more information about Steel Heels Podcast, please go to ColleenFerrari.com.